So it's the same thing. It's like, well, you know, Pastor C vehemently denies, you know, stealing your car, although we have a video of him in your car. Um, <laughs> I, I, he said he didn't do it. His family said he didn't do it. So I, I'm, that's where I am. Right. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Mm. I agree. I, I totally agree. Um, um, now, I'm going to ask you a question, though, uh, um, uh, Chief. You know, is it is it just how politicians and our government work? You know, um, how they respond is determined by what they want you to know? Well, I, I think I think sometimes it is. I, I think that that certain information is is put out um, just to to make it to make a political point. I, I think that there are times when I'm going to ignore certain information to make a political point. And and these guys they they watch their base very carefully. Sure. They they listen to the folks that are around them most of the time that are saying look. The folks that, you know, your base in the west side of town, this is their issue. And so when you go to the west side of town, your issue is is trash pickup. Mm-hmm. You go to the to the south side of town, but their issue is snow removal. So when you go down there, it's all about snow removal. So absolutely, do I think they do certain things and take on certain issues and make certain statements to keep people in their corner? I sure do. Yeah. And and it's it's very apparent, even to the detriment of of their own uh, of looking out for the entire population. You see, and that's the that's the, the the piece that I'm waiting for him to get is that you are everybody's president. Yep. Regardless of whether I voted for you or not, you are my president too. So I'm dependent on you to make sure that that I'm protected, that I'm not paying absorbent amounts of money for health care, that we are living in a world where we are fiscally responsible and we do have the ability to support our troops and all these other things, you know? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I think if he ever gets to the point where he understands that, yes, you're going to disagree on Democratic, Republican, independent issues, but at the end of the day, you are everyone's president. Yes. You know, you're yeah. not just the, the 30% that like you. The other 70% that didn't vote for you, you're their president too. Yeah. And I think that's our problem that we're seeing about issues and stuff, because I think I think he caters to and favors those who support him and and everyone else, you know, to heck with you guys. And and it becomes problematic because everyone is not getting the fair share or the attention that they deserve because we have a president who is biased. And I'm just, you know, speaking truth, um, straight no chaser. And so. Um, the information that is released that comes from our government right now and our presidency um, caters to a specific group of individuals. And Who that's are not the majority. A- absolutely. <laughs> they never were since the beginning of the election. And he, he lost the popular vote so that he was already at a disadvantage. Which is not a Republican or a Democratic or independent issue. Right. right. Because you have Republicans who don't necessarily agree That's with right. the presidency. Well, That's right. Yep. Well, you know, and, and I'm going to take this as a segue before Ambezi takes us to break, Pastor C. But I had to make, even though we're talking about uh, global warming, I do have to take this time, Pastor C, to remind everyone in the California and Vegas area that even though we're talking about global warming, the ice cold brothers of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity oh. Incorporated oh, are going oh, to host six. the one, one, one. ninth annual <laughs> Black and Gold Scholarship Gala Absolutely. on Saturday, December 1st at the, where is it, Pastor C? Bring it to them. It is at the Green Valley um, Station Casinos, I believe it is. Green Valley Resort, Resort. Casino. There we go. Yes. Yeah. And and just so everyone knows, the we've been doing this for several years and we're very proud that we've raised in the last three years alone a hundred and twenty thousand dollars for scholarships for Las Vegas uh, area yeah. youth. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. We are, last year we gave out fifty thousand dollars in scholarship in mm. scholarships. And boy, I cut that verb up there. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it's okay, Prince. That's, That's okay, right. Prince. And, and, and scholarships. And just all one. the proceeds are, are going to that purpose. And we're just so excited that this year it's going to be uh, even bigger and better. And just want to give a shout out to uh, uh, Brother Anthony Williams and Brother Keith whoop, whoop, Rogers, whoop. who are leading that effort. Absolutely. And we just hope that everyone within the sound of our voice will 
will make it to this event because it's all about making sure that our young people are able to go to high school and most importantly to go to college. So Ann Beasy, take us out. Hey. I see what you did there. Climate change, ice cold. Ice cold. <laughs> pun, it's pun, a climate change. Pun baby. was definitely intended. <laughs> um, First of all, service. Service of all. We shall transcend out. <laughs> <laughs> so when we get back from the break, I actually want to shake things up a bit because we've heard of Jeffrey Dahmer. We've heard of these great serial killers of our time, but the most prolific serial killer has just made um, made people aware of his victims. So let's talk about that when we come back from the break. Ooh. You're listening to Straight No Chaser. We'll be right back. Even at first, it's pretty harsh. You don't realize, you know? Up to 90 days in jail. I can't be there for my family. I'm in here. They're out there. They put an ignition interlock in your car for one year. Car won't start unless you blow into it. It's, it's embarrassing. You gotta pay fees. Get a lawyer. Need to see my probation officer for testing all the time. Have to pick up garbage. It literally consumes your life. I lost my family's trust. Lost my job. I lost my marriage. I lost my kids. Lost a lot of time, you know? A DWI is just a big waste of time. Your education is a gift. And you have to use it wisely. It's okay going for extra help, studying by yourself, and using learning skills to develop your knowledge. You have to work hard to be where you want to be in the future. When I wake up, my dreams fade. Everything cascade in this vanilla sky. I feel like David Because at the end of the day, it will pay off. Don't be a fool and not stay in school. Life changes. Life changes. Leave me alone. When a child shares hurtful comments online, that's bullying. Visit erasebullying.ca to learn how to help your child stand up to cyberbullying. Let's get back. To your girl and BZ, Pastor C, and the Chief, as they give it to you straight, no chaser. with the people that they killed. But recently, um, it was actually breaking news today, there was or is a 78-year-old man who is in, who's actually serving multiple life sentences right now, who confessed to killing 90 women since 1970. What? So he is now... So let's let's go back. Let's go back. So this man has is serving multiple life sentences. His health is failing. So he obviously couldn't strike a plea deal to get out early. So he decided to strike a different kind of plea deal where he tells the FBI about all the murders he's committed. So he goes to the FBI and he says, "Okay, well I've killed like 90 women." They're like, "No way." He gives 34 and so far they have closed 34 cold cases because he was able to prove that he committed those murders. And they actually have, they they think that he might have been the person who was committing all those murders in the 80s in the Bay Area. Oh, wow. 
So, um, his name, his name is Samuel Little. And if they can confirm that he has killed all 90 of these women since 1970, he will be among the most prolific serial killers in U.S. history. Oh, my gosh. So, wow. and he is, and he is one of us, y'all. He's, he's a black man. So. He's African American. He is African American. So well, well, that stereotype has, 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 has now. Well, but see, 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 see. But you know, no, 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 doing those types of things, 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 things. But we have to make sure we show, we show, we show is that any and any race is capable, 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 capable yep. things like that. Sure. Um, yep. You know, if you look back over the years, I mean, even back across the ocean, people were were being killed and raped and pillaged. You know, in, in those situations. And so, as long as you have human beings, you're going to have people that will do those types of things so it's it's not you know, a race issue it, it, no it's not a race issue when, when you have folks and, and, and I look at this for example um, because conversely MBZ people could say the same thing about what's going on in Chicago and Baltimore absolutely um, yeah. you know in Chicago and Baltimore where you had you know 500 homicides in, in one city and 200 well 350 in the other so between two cities in America you lost almost a thousand people Mm-hmm. At the ha- and ma- the majority of these killings were happening in in some of your poor neighborhoods. Sure. And so y- you know, and that's the same type of, of mass killing. We just don't associate it with one person, but that's still a lot of people being killed in a certain situation. Yeah. So, so we we just have to keep that in mind. So, chief, Great point, do you chief. know do you know where this story um, broke? Where? None other than Prince George's County, Maryland. Yep, that's where <laughs> that's where I did uh, 25 years and and in law enforcement. Well, with, when you include the other departments, and left there as deputy chief when I retired. So, so I'm wondering if you're familiar because it says here um, he was a prisoner in, te- in Texas and had begun confessing to dozens and dozens of killings committed from 1970 to 2005, and one of the killings that he described matched the description of a Jane Doe found 46 years ago in Laurel. So they were, so I guess the Prince George's County, uh, some detectives from Prince George's County um, were hoping that he could help solve this cold case. So that's, I think that's kind of a crazy coincidence that it's kind of rooted there. Yeah, it's a very sad. Interesting. Oh, that's a that's it a is. very sad case. It's a very sad case. Very sad. And to hear that, you know, um, of course, uh, and, and if I can just slide this this in there or whatever, in, in terms of my commentary, um, the the reason why I asked his race is because it, it is almost unheard of mm-hmm. to hear of a person of color being a serial killer. However, yeah. I do agree with you, Chief. You made a very strong, valid point that that type of senseless killing. Um, um, and ethnicity is not even important. It's irrelevant. Yeah. You know, when individuals are losing their lives like that, and then when you consider Chicago, because I'm from there, born and raised and bred in that city and grew up around senseless killings. And so whether it is a serial killer or someone who is just doing it, um, you know, here and there or, or, or what have you, it is still senseless and it is it is disheartening to hear that um, at the latter part of his life, he is claiming that he has claimed so many lives. Yeah. That's devastating. It is. And I think, yeah. um, I think, you know, for all the women out there, obviously crime can happen to anybody. Sure. Anybody can be a victim sure. from anything as small as somebody breaking into your car to something on the deep end, like murder. But women really have to be careful and be aware because... This man was specifically targeting women. Women. Women of color. It didn't matter black or or Asian or Hispanic, but women of color were his victims. Wow. Um, with a few exceptions. But you know, you really have to be careful out there because you don't know what people are capable of. This guy looks like Fred Sanford. He looks like somebody's grandfather. Um yeah, he did. <laughs> so, you know, and and the killings go back to as recently as 2005. So literally somebody's grandfather. Wow. <laughs> so um, I just think that's really interesting. I'm a criminal justice major myself, and I hope to one day 
um, do special research with cases like this. So it definitely. 